Hey there, how you doing? It's been a while, huh? So, I've actually gotten a bit of feedback from last time I, you know, made the ADHD video, and I decided to make a part 2 for that same video. Now, I bet you're wondering, what exactly am I going to teach you this time? Because there isn't really much to learn other than the basics that you needed to know no matter what and that you would use to your day to day. Now, I will update on a few things that I, you know, are a bit outdated from the last tutorial, but it's just minor changes that you can go through and change. And we're also going to be added a few things that anyone that does creative work is just gonna need. All right, let's get started with, you know, doing this. Well, first of all, hello, my ADHD friends. Welcome. Welcome here. We're going to start doing this instantly. All right. OK, let's get started. So basically, you go d over here, you go to shader editor, and then you go up and you'll see these things. Yes, these things. And, you know, it's quite terrifying to deal with these things. Um, I I at least, you know, personally don't want to deal with these things, Um, but I had to if I wanted to make stuff. And you'll see here that you have your little like texture node that I showed you from the last tutorial. It's pretty damn simple and eh, yeah. Second, you'll notice I have the blend kit thing here. This is if you want to add materials to something, but sometimes materials just aren't enough. And you're like, you know what? I, I want to keep the default cube today and I want to texture this default cube. Well, do I have the application for you? If we press N here, you'll see it brings up this menu, but oh, oh, if we scroll down, uh, don't ignore that. Painting system, materials, what's this? Well, this app is provided by moi. Yes, this person, he made a layer app for Blender. It's amazing. Um, You're able to texture anything instantly with your own textures anything and you don't have to deal with nodes at all because before what you had to do in case you ever wanted to texture something manually you had to get your principal vsdf then you had to do shift a which is just to like open the menu then you press here then you go to image texture and you just put that little bad boy in you press new and then you just name that like i don't know potato you put the amount that you want, so basically you can just do this one and then three. There we go. And then you just copy paste this and make it like a perfect square. That way it's just all textures and you can choose the color or whatever. It really doesn't matter, but that's just like the basics of the texture and you can leave them black. And then you just go here and you can choose like the UVs if it's if it's alpha or not. And you just press new image and there you go. You got your texture. You just connect that to color and bam. If we go to the texture image, there you go. Now your square is black. And the best part, you can add an image to it. Now, one thing that you're gonna need, it's essential, you just do control T and it automatically adds all the little stuff. Like for example, if you wanna move the texture around, you just go here, you ro rotate it, location, everything. And that's just by pressing control T and this just automatically adds the mapping and the texture nodes or uh, texture coordinates rather. And yeah, this is just to do that. Ignore this other stuff. None of it is important. All you need to do is UV, vector, and then vector, vector, then color, color. And there you go. You can start painting with the default brush. And this is in case you won't, don't want to add the paint system. But yeah, then you just go into texture paint. And eh, well, if you pick another color, because the current color you can't really use is black already. If we do pink, there you go. You can paint it. And it's freaking perfect. And we don't have to deal with it. It's amazing. I love this so much. But yeah, that's what we call the default painting. You can just paint stuff like this and add texture to it and done. There's your magical artwork that looks amazing. Or what you can also do if we do shift A and add a cube, which you would have learned from the last video. We go X and then we press one. There you go. And we have another cube with this new paint system we can actually add textures to this. Now keep in mind that the paint system is mostly made to work with Eevee Engine. Like it, it works the best with Eevee. And honestly, you can make Eevee Engine look like cycles, but in general, it works with Eevee. So now what we gotta do is we gotta click here on where it says new. Now, 
my dude, the YouTuber, he actually explains how to use the whole thing. He doesn't explain some particular stuff, but if you just copy what he does in the video, you should end up with a pretty nice product. So here you just press new and you'll add like a group of materials. You just click on add group and here you, you just pick the color alpha, set material. You can name the group whatever. I'm just going to call my new material potato X2 because why not? And we press OK. And you'll see your cube turns white. And I bet the, your first action will be, well, can I start painting? Uh, no, no. You'll see it says missing text here. Link. Well, do I have the button for you? You press over here and you press new layer or open texture image. Well, you can use any of these other options, but new image and you can pick the resolution. I usually just pick 4000 to get a really nice resolution. And guess what? Now, if you go into paint texture, you can just start painting. And you know the best part? You don't just have to use the default brush because, you know, default brush is cool and all. But if you add preset brush, well, would you look at this? We have brushes we can use that are actually nicely textured and makes it so you can make really intricate, cool textures. Like for example, what you can do is go here, bucket, fill it up, and we have a pink here. It's a really strong pink, but what you can do is make it darker, and then you can just switch back to the brush, and then what you can do is start adding shading, as you can see here, and you can, you can make it gradual. I usually use this brush, because it's just nicer, and instead of having the strength at 100%, I usually put it at a lower percentage like this. Let me just control Z all of my brush strokes there. And I'm just going to do something like this. And you'll see it just does a really nice effect. We can just paint stuff in directly on the model. There is just no fuss. You don't have to worry about it. And you can just keep painting as much as you want. And you end up with something like this. And you can keep making it darker. So you can keep layering it on like this and there we go we've textured one side and then what else can i do well you can always just copy the color again just so we get the base color and we can add another layer on top of this and what can we do with this well we can just switch it to white and just start adding highlights like this look at this like just the ability to add like a layer of highlights and just make it look good you can add like a darkness section as well. Like you can just go to like a really dark pink and just do this at the bottom and just add that as like a layer. And then what you can do is actually adjust the opacity of the layer so that it looks less pronounced. And there you go. You get like a really, really nicely textured thing. I, this is honestly the best freaking they add on ever. And yes, it's an add on. Please, please, please go to this guy's video, support him. He made this app on its own and it is incredible. I plan on using this in the future so, so much. His brush selection is just amazing. Like just the ability to have these very, very nice brushes that just are just high quality in general. And you know the best part, you can just texture the whole thing like this. It, it's just incredible. I really would recommend this in case you just don't want to mess around with nodes. But speaking of nodes, huh? Weren't we going to talk about nodes? Well, let's quickly move over to that. If we go here, make sure you're in, you click here and you're in shader editor. And then you'll see this stuff. And you're like, whoa, what's all this stuff? Well, here you can see your principal BSDF and the output. Now, we don't particularly need to care about that. That's just the base material. You'll see it turns back to white. It's just the base material. We don't have to care about it. If we click on this, there you go. Our pink is back. But what we can also do is do really, really cool stuff. So here you'll see these collections of nodes. You don't need to edit these to do anything crazy. But what we can do is go over here. And if you follow the tutorial of the dude, you'll see that he goes out of paint mode. And then he goes to here and he clicks on the plus and you click on set up material and you do none. Uh, make sure, well here, we gotta name it something else. I'm gonna call this potato X3. You can name it whatever you want. 
Like for example, in his video, he shows as an example, it's just going to be called something like image or shader layer or whatever. Of course, I understood it perfectly, but you might not. And then he just deletes this layer and he's left with this layer. And I bet you're wondering, well, what do I do with this layer? Well, you can just paint on top of this. If you go here, you can start painting in the shadows. Now, before you do anything, you want to quickly go into the node group. And this is where we start learning a little bit about nodes. You just move this little sucker over here. And if we go shift A and we add a gloss, a glossy BSDF. And then if we do here in this mix shader and we just do shift D and we add another one. We can just connect this like right here, connect this to the surface, and then connect this one to this one. And you can do this infinitely with the mix shader node. This is your most important node. What this one lets you do is do this. And this one also should have it, but it doesn't have it enabled because the mix is just directly given to through that node there. So what I would do is just connect it like this. And we then we connect color to color is make this brighter and we can start painting in the actual lighting of this object. So if you've ever seen my streams lately, you'll notice, hey, he's actually painting and making stuff look bright and adding like reflections and stuff and making it look cool. And that's because I've been using this app right here. And if we get out of the paint mode and go to this mode and we grab our light over here and we do this, you're gonna start noticing, whoa, it's actually slightly reflective and it has a little bit of texturing on it. It looks really, really cool. Of course, it's not very, very noticeable on this one because I, I just rushed it a little bit. I didn't quite texture it, but you'll see it has the same amount of lighting and reflection as this object right here, only a little bit more dim. And of course, if you want it to texture this a little better, you can just go to texture paint and the basics is the darker the color, the less uh, light goes there or eh, something like that. I don't know. This is just normal painting in general. You tend to learn this eventually as you start making more and more models. Like for example, you can he here if you want to like texture stuff, you can just add random brush strokes across the whole thing. You can add like bright ones and then it should look a little bit more textured and noisy. And you can just do this with anything. It'll just make it look cool. And yeah, that's basic adding like reflections and a slight material to stuff you can make uh, some parts shinier than others due to the fact that we use the glossy one the glossy bsdf we can just go to cycles here change it from cpu to gpu because if you have a gpu you might as well use it and we do denoise you can see here it's still reflective so it's still reflecting light so I basically just taught you how to actually texture, use these textures and have it reflect light even inside of cycles. Keep in mind, it'll be much more laggier inside of cycles. So I prefer you use Eevee because then it's just smooth as butter and you don't really have to care about it. Now, I know I've been yapping quite a bit and you're like, well, I didn't learn much. It just taught me the basics. Well, that's just because if you ever wanted to do anything more complicated than this, you would just do it with stuff like this, and you can mess around with this as much as you want. Alright, but that's all I'm gonna do for now for this first part of the video. Like, this is just the first half of the video. I had to split it into two videos because I did yap quite a bit. I talked a lot. And we're gonna talk about nodes and stuff and what you can do with them and the really cool stuff you can do with sculpting and all that in a second video after this one. So I'm just, this one's the one I edited. I did the little cool stuff with it. I made it so you can pay attention and I made it short so it's digestible. So you can just understand how to text your stuff and do like a cool bit of shading and just the basics of that. So yeah, this will just be how to texture and that's the basics of this one. The next one, how to add node groups and how to sculpt. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you like this video. I will see you in the next one. Um, bye bye.